The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a man who was paralyzed, lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralyzed man, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And the man stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. The Gospel of the Lord. The sacrifice of Isaac represents the climax of the account in the book of Genesis of Abraham and his relationship with God. There are echoes in today's reading of Abraham's original call. In both cases, God speaks to him and tells him to set out on a journey. Both incidents end with promises about Abraham's offspring and God's blessing on them. The incident at the heart of today's reading has provoked an enormous range of responses over the centuries. Some have wondered what kind of God could possibly ask a father to sacrifice his son. Others have attacked Abraham for being willing to do so. It has even been argued that Abraham underwent a kind of temporary insanity. Some have suggested that he knew from the beginning that God would provide him a way out of the impossible dilemma facing him. There were rabbis in the medieval period who believed that Isaac died and came back to life. The letter to the Hebrews suggests that Abraham did what he did because he considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead. Later, Christian writers saw in Isaac a type or figure of Christ carrying the wood of the cross to his sacrifice. At the beginning of today's reading, we are told that God tested Abraham. He is testing his faith and trust and above all his obedience. What God asks of the patriarch is all but unimaginable. Take your son, he says, your only son, Isaac, your son whom you love, and offer him as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Although Abraham has another son, Ishmael, by the slave woman, Hagar, Isaac is his only son in the sense that it is through him that the promises made by God are to be fulfilled. A striking feature of the Genesis account is how restrained, how terse it is. We are given no hint of Abraham's emotional reaction to God's directive, nor are we given any indication of what he or Isaac thought or talked about during the three days of their journey. Everything underlines Abraham's unwavering obedience. His response could not have been more immediate or more total. He rose early in the morning, we are told, saddled his donkey, took two slaves with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place that God had shown him. The exchange between father and son when they arrive at the mountain of sacrifice, the only conversation between them recorded in the Bible is brief but poignant. Father Isaac asks, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Has Isaac begun to realize what is about to happen? What are his feelings? Once again, 
We are not told. Abraham builds the altar and lays Isaac on it and is about to kill him when a voice from heaven stops him. Rembrandt depicted precisely this moment in a number of paintings as well as in a series of etchings. Whereas the biblical account has the angel simply speaking and Abraham reacting, Rembrandt shows the angel seizing Abraham's arm and in some versions almost embracing him as if to underline the drama and the emotion of the scene. The angel, here functioning as the voice of God, announces the meaning of the event. Because you have not withheld your son, your only son, he says, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. God's promises to the patriarch and his descendants are reaffirmed. The test to which Abraham is subjected is not for God's sake, but for his sake and for the sake of his offspring. Through it, Abraham learns in a whole new way the depth of commitment to God's will that is being asked of him. In responding as he does, he leaves a pattern of faith and obedience to all who will come after him. The obedience of Abraham reverses the disobedience, the disregard of God's will that so mars the biblical account of humanity prior to him. His obedience points forward to that of Jesus. Such obedience puts us in tune with God, opens us to his gifts, enables us to enter into his peace. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that our sharing in this Eucharist will deepen our desire to be at one with God's will, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For people in public office at whatever level that they will truly serve the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For victims of violence and abuse, that they will be helped to overcome their suffering and live full lives, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who have died recently, especially those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. 